cover. You got this mesh, yeah. And why is that? Because there are fish that like to jump, unfortunately. They like these algae wafers, even the tetras like them. And everyone starts to come out and investigate, see what's going on. I am Ty Streetman, and this is my tank. This is an Aquascaper 1500. It's a tank that I actually got from Aquarium Gardens because they were upgrading their tank and cabinet and they let me have this one at a great discount and it was in the kitchen you may remember it was there but I wanted to bring it into here because I realized I wasn't enjoying it enough in the kitchen I was never sitting down and actually just watching it and my dear friend Nick who runs Maidenhead Aquatics at Huntingdon he helped me move this thing and this cabinet. And it was a Herculean task, and there were a few near misses, <laughs> but he helped me put it in here, and I'm forever grateful. And now I can hang out in here, I've got a sort of futon chair, and I can sit here and just watch the fish and relax. That's great. Tell us about the fish in here. It's a bit of a smorgasbord of <laughs> different things. A smorgasbord? A smorgasbord. For those that don't know what a smorgasbord is, what's a smorgasbord? I don't know the, the, the origin of the word, but it basically means a complete chaotic variety of things. Is it? Yeah. It's a good name, isn't it? Yeah. Smorgas. I'm sure it's a Scandinavian or German. I'm going to, I'm going to overlay the German term. on the video right now of smorgas. <laughs> I'd like to use these videos as uh, we general can do knowledge that. education as well as... Um, All right. Well, if we're talking about the fish, there's a few standouts. You can see the watermelon tetras here, Hemigramus coeruleus. They're beautiful uh, fishes, and these guys came from uh, Ely Aquatics and Reptiles. Apparently, when the males are in breeding condition, they go brilliant blood red. And mine have not yet decided, that, decided to do that, but they have got this lovely lateral stripe. They're like, That's the biggest tetra we can see here. Yeah, they're, these guys, one of them, as I said, lost an eye. Yeah, he jumped out of one of the tanks. And sadly, by the time I caught him, his eye had been damaged, but he's come back from the brink and he feeds and thrives. The other mm, two species that are dominating here, there's the little green neons, Parakirin and Simulans, which, you know, are quite very popular. Perhaps my favorite tetra. I've always loved them. And then I have these little Hemigramus stictus, uh, then maybe, but I, I don't know. I, I, Stictus. Stictus, yeah. If you look at any of like uh, Ivan Mikolji's photos from Venezuela, oh, yeah. or his wonderful book, uh, uh, Orinoco, uh, you will see photos of them. And they get this lovely kind of coppery emerald green color. There's a nice example here with the red on the tails. Yeah. And they're really, they're quite sweet. Then, there's a few randoms in here. There's a uh, little Hemigramus lunatus that came in his bycatch. And that's a fish I know quite well from the Pantanal. Filmed them in Brazil quite a bit. Then there are some Rathman's tetras, Aphiocarax rathbunai. Really isn't it? Yeah, there's a couple. There's every tank I have. There's always going to be some. And there's uh, another tetra bycatch which is hanging out in the back. I don't know what he is. I think he might be kind of Moncasia. Um, he looks very similar to the watermelons. I think that's you, it for it, tetras. That's awesome. And can you explain what bycatch means for those that don't know? Bycatch is when fishes say you want to collect green neons to ship from Colombia to the UK for the aquarium hobby. And you go out and you net them. Some of the unintended uh, species that are caught alongside them, so some random small fishes, get shipped as well. And they turn up in the aquarium shops and they're known as bycatch and that's often where you find sort of rarer gems, you know. They're not popular, but they might, and they might not be as colorful, but they come in with something that is popular and then you find them. Interesting. There's some little uh, Capella alnaldi, the splash tetras in here. 
and more slender body. Yeah, there's. Dots. Well, I think that's actually a. That may be Capella Nutterari, but there is an Arnaldi male somewhere lurking around in a female. There's the Crossocalus oblongus, the Siamese algae eaters. There's a couple of those. There's various Ottos, including this one, who's entirely dark. Um, there's Corridorus pygmaeus in here. They appear every now and then. There are some killifish that just ended up in here because I didn't have anywhere else to put them. So some little Aphia semian uh, killifish from West Africa that kind of hang out in the corners mostly. I don't see them very often. There's some large Amano shrimp. I saw those, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're doing very well. They live a long time. They, they, yeah, they can. Oh, wow. Well, I hope that my mom will go on to be happy and live long and fruitful lives. I hope to see some of these alligators are pretty large. Yeah, there's, two, there's three of them in here. There is a larger one somewhere, but he mostly hangs out under a rock. I put algae wafers in for everyone. Um, and even the tetras enjoy them. Yeah, so I'm feeding, I've actually got some of the wazi foods, I think. The organics. The organics, I give them algae wafers. I Every day they get frozen food, um, a mixture of bloodworm, mysis, artemia, norpoli, artemia norpoli. Um, yeah, I give them a, I, I put a bunch of cubes in a water of a dish, yeah. and then I use a syringe to inject it into the tank. And that's a beautiful stone. Here, yeah, this is actually the jade stone from Wio, which is this greeny, yeah, I don't know, it makes me think of uh, Aztec jewellery, that kind of emerald green in there and, and the malachite tones, obsidians, very sharp, very flaky. Like if you crack it, you yeah. can, you could it shave very, with it. Uh, yeah, de definite kind of structure, mm. doesn't it? But it's a very pleasing colour. And so that's the, there's three or four pieces that form the basis of the, the scape in here. And then on top of them, I put um, two big bits of wood, which came from, one of them is from Aquarium Gardens, and one of them I pulled out of a river somewhere uh, ages ago, yeah. And this sort of long trunk piece. And I covered them in moss, which is doing very, very well, Java moss, just regular Java moss. And then the other week, I got lots of Boost Philandra uh, from Aquarium Gardens, from a tank they were shutting down, 1500. So I've added that in here, and there's other epiphytes growing, bulbatus and anubias and schismatoglossus and some other weird ones that I've forgotten the name of that are quite rare. Um, and the idea is eventually they'll just cover this bit and then that bit, and there's a break between the two. And I wanted something that was quite a solid structure, so it looks like a log has fallen into the water and sort of broken in half and then got covered in epiphytes. The, uh, I've moved around the Myriophyllum rhyma, this orange stem plant, so it's a bit looking a bit sorry for itself. It's not as dense as it normally is. It was in the center, I've moved it into the corner. There's some Myriophyllum tuberculatum, the red one which went in the other week. Oh, it's just, a different yeah, I just put so that the in. One, the rare armor is on the left. Yeah, the this one is here. There's lots of cryptocorn crispatula from Tropica. There's also some great Valensi variants and uh, retrospiralis. And the idea is that that would eventually fill up the back. I've got uh, Echinodorus uruguayensis, these lovely tall swords. And there's also a big Echinodorus macrophyllus in the back, but you can't really see it. There's loads of crypts uh, in the foreground and the midground. Um, Cryptocorn Nuri, Cryptocorn Purpurea, Cryptocorn Rosen Maiden, Cryptocorn Willer's Eye, uh, Cryptocorn Pontoderifolia. Uh, I think there's some Wentai Brown and some Undulatus Red. There's some Lajanandra in here, uh, Lajananda Neri, which is sometimes known as Lajananda Meboldi Green, which is in the corner over there. I did plant Marsilia in here. And the idea was to have a Marsilia carpet. 
it's growing very, very, very slowly, which is okay. Um, but I had it hoped that it would have covered it by now, but it doesn't want to, that's okay. Uh, Ludwigia inclinata var cuba, which I put in last week, just because I've never grown it before. And I just stuck that in amongst the epiphytes growing on the wood. Something I like to do is just push the stems into the plants. They don't need to go in the soil. That's right. If they get, get all the nutrients here to light, they need without yeah. their roots in the soil. And then they'll grow up near the light and form a sort of bushier. The equipment on this display. Yeah, it's about fil fil filtration. You run so I'm running two Wazi Biomaster Thermo 850s. Wow. Um, yeah, because I wanted plenty of yeah. flow and that's inline CO2 into each one of them with the green leaf aquarium solenoids and gauges okay. and the inline units from aquarium gardens. And I'm using the, I use the WASI pipework uh, so I can put omnidirectional this flow going to each corner. Yeah. And that's useful because the plants get tons of CO2. Yeah. So you've got two separate CO2 units and yeah. filters. Separate. Yeah. Wow. It's a big, I mean, overkill. well, Not overkill, but it's, you know, it's good. I looked at what Dave was doing at Aquarium Gardens because yeah. my plants weren't thriving and he was like, you need more CO2 <laughs> and more flow. Um, there's uh, the lighting, I quite, I quite like the story of the light. So, so the lighting's T5, isn't it? T5, fluorescent. yeah, one, 120 centimeters light unit with four T5 bulbs, 54 watt bulbs. And this was the light unit that was above the plant holding tank at Aquarium Gardens. And they upgraded that light to LEDs and they threw this light unit out. And um, it was out in the rain and the elements for about five or six weeks, I think. And I saw it there and I said, oh, what are you guys doing with this? And they said, oh, we're throwing it out. And I said, well, can I have it? And they said, sure, but if it doesn't, it doesn't work. It's been out in the rain. And I plugged it in and it worked. <laughs> so I bought some new bulbs and I put it on here. And actually, um, there's some daylight glow and some pinkish, I don't know. Ebay, Ebay, because oh, it's, it's not easy to find T5 no, bulbs anymore. I, think, I don't think they're actually. Well, I bought a stash that I found and they actually, <laughs> I've got ADA lights, I've got wheel lights, I've got twin star lights. I don't have any algae in this tank and I'm running <laughs> T5s. I still use T5s at Tropico and the Tesla. Yeah, yeah, yeah you were saying that. The fish, it reminds me a bit more of Amano's kind of nature aquariums, like the 90s, that sort of greeny glow. I like it a lot. Fish look nice under it. They might not pop as they would under LEDs. Plants grow very well. It's a warm colour. I like the ambience. And yeah, it's simple. So I've got that pendant unit. One thing I want to talk about the substrate in here. This is the Wio. Eonian soil, the Weo wetlands, Eonian soil. And this is a mixture of the red and the dark. And it's a volcanic based substrate rather than clay. It's very nutritious. It's supposedly five times as nutritious as ADA Amazonia. And it's quite granular. You can see it's fairly sort of gritty, if you like. But I find that you push a plant into it and it never pops up again. It actually stays in there. And the other thing I noticed is that. And I, you know, I can say I work for Wio, so you know, I'm pitching it. But I've been testing it in here, and I noticed that plants, the roots really form around the granules, so they get anchored quite quickly. And then things are growing, so you know, it seems to work. It doesn't cloud, does it? It doesn't cloud. It doesn't cause an ammonia spike. Planting into it is a bit of a job, and it's recommended that you actually put a couple of inches of water in when you plant. Um, so if you have any very nice fancy tweezers, maybe don't use them because <laughs> it is quite a gritty substrate. It looks, te it looks texture you know, like the Carob Sea Eco Complete. Yeah, exactly. Or the Sea Chem Fluoride. But this has actually got nutrients in. Yeah. And there is a powder version that you can use, but I was like, well, I'm going to use it and it'd be a good way to see how it grows the plants. 
I had a big prune, like I told you, the Mirifilm Roraima actually completely took over the center of the tank. You could been, couldn't even see the surface, everything else was being, you did, it didn't look like there was any Belensai in there. It was just covered in Mirifilm. So I pruned it and then I moved it and it's sulking. It didn't like being moved. But in a couple of weeks it will bounce back. Well, do you want the fairy tale or the real deal? The real deal is I'm going to have to break it down uh, fairly soon because I just can't justify having such a large tank. Like I like having all the different fishes, but the, the thing for me is to hold on to my slightly more valuable and rare plants. And it's a lot of energy. It takes a lot to run it. It takes a lot of my time. I've got other tanks. I've got a lot to do in life. So I'm thinking of downscaling to a 120 centimeter tank, a very simple uh, old tank that a friend has got, Nick has told me I can have. It has a, a lid, it's got built-in T8 lights, and I will put all my plants into it, maybe not the stems, but certainly the swords and the crypts and the mosses and epiphytes, and I will run it cool with cherry barbs and white cloud minnows. It. Yeah, well, I hope you'll be involved maybe in, in setting it up. And my idea is basically to transplant this scape, so this wood and this wood and the plants at the back yeah. into it. I won't include the rocks, so it should fit. There'll be lots of plants, a few fish, and it will require much less of my time and energy, but I hope it'll give me lots of pleasure. And I hope it'll be a good way to showcase what you can do running a, a temperate tank. I think a lot of people are scaling down at the moment and thinking about energy costs and we're not immune to that. So I would ideally like to run it for 10 years <laughs> in this size, but well, the one, the one certainty is, is change, right? So yeah, change is the consistency. Yeah. And it's given me a lot of joy and a lot of pleasure this tank. So. Okay, thanks Ty. Thank you George. Take care everyone.